uh, Democratic leader is still here on the floor, I just want to mention that I understand his concern about the health care issue and the amendments and the process for moving forward and the necessity for doing so. I made my views very clear. I won't repeat that eloquent speech that I made. I would just like to say to my friend from New York that we do have a bill that passed through the committee 27 to 0, not a single person against it, after many days of debate, amendments, discussion, including a couple of hundred amendments that were disposed of in the tradition of the Armed Services Committee. Now, I believe that it's in everybody's interest to go ahead and take up the defense bill so that we can go to conference and uh, resolve other issues such as sequestration, etc. So I understand the frustration that my friend from New York feels. But I, where I have a disagreement with my friend from New York is saying that these two issues are inseparable. I believe that our obligation to the men and women in the military is transcendent. So I understand the frustration of the senator from New York. I was here when with 60 votes <coughs> the bill was rammed through over Republican objections without a single amendment. I understand his frustration. And so what the senator, from, the majority leader and I are asking for is just tomorrow to take up the bill. We can get it done in a few hours, send it to conference, take care of the equipment, training, all the things that the men and women who are serving in the military need. And by the way, I understand the emotion on the other side. I felt the same emotion on this side some years ago, and I haven't forgotten it yet. But so I would hope that, and I know that the senator from New York has to discuss with his conference this issue of the defense authorization bill. I would remind him and all of my colleagues for 53 years now, we have passed and had the President of the United States sign the defense authorization bill. That is, a, that is a precedent that I really hope we do not break because of our obligation to the men and women who are serving in the military. And I know the senator from New York feels exactly the same way. I am not impugning the integrity of the senator from New York. But I, I would just ask that we consider, and I know that the senator from New York has to go back to his conference. I hope that they would all consider. I, for would example, my colleague see, yield? could I just finally say, I, I note, for example, the senator uh, from Virginia here on the floor, who has been a vital part of the, no, not the other one, not him. Uh, that <laughs> both, both have been vital members of the Armed Services Committee. And yes, we have our disputes. Yes, we have our arguments. Yes, we are spirited. But we come out unanimously in favor of taking care of the men and women in the, in the military. I hope that the senator from New York... My colleague yield for just a minute yes. so I could answer him before the yes. majority leader speaks. Look, first, our respect for the senator from Arizona. My dear friendship, really love for the man, is unbounded. I, I am repeating in my head, as many of us have, the speech that our friend from Arizona gave when he came back, and we were all so joyous that he did. He talked about going to regular order. He talked about working in a bipartisan way. He talked about doing this health care bill the right way, with hearings, with uh, debate, with amendment. Even I accepted his chastisement that we passed a partisan bill. He knows the record shows I didn't want to do that. But we did have debate and amendments. We had a process where six people spent, from three from each party, spent six months trying to come to an agreement. They did not. But I must say, the reason that we must ask consent to go to the bill is we're in reconciliation. The very process that has prevented us from debating, from having hearings, from having some kind of bipartisan input. And I would say to my colleague, if you want to get rid of this reconciliation, fine. Let's recommit the bill to committee and start on a fair process. 
and we can go to NDAA immediately, in an hour, if we were to do that. The reason we can't do that is our dear friend, the majority leader, is insisting on the reconciliation process. And you can't say, we can't, because we feel defense is important, and we feel the health care of tens of millions of Americans is equally important. And we can't say, you can turn on and turn off the reconciliation process when you want to and when you don't. What's good for the goose, good for the gander. If it's good, if reconciliation is poor and prevents NDA from coming up immediately, it's equally poor, maybe more so, when it comes to health care. So my plea and suggestion, let's not go forward with this bill. We don't even know what it is yet. Let's go back to committee. I spoke to Senator Alexander. I spoke to Senator Murray this morning. If this bill fails, they will go back and try to negotiate bipartisan improvements to the law, just as my good friend from Arizona recommended when he came back in that moving speech. But my caucus, I've spoken to a few, feel very strongly that this process on health care has been awful. And it's because of reconciliation, and now reconciliation has put NDA in a bind as well. Let's get rid of reconciliation, and we can do what the leader, the uh, senator from Arizona wants, and what I think the American people want, a fair process. Reclaiming, uh, floor. reclaiming my time. I, I ask unanimous consent that my remarks... Senator from Arizona has the floor. Just, I ask unanimous consent my remarks count against leader time. Is there objection? Mr. Mr. President, I don't want... Without objection. Senator from Arizona. Mr. President, I don't want to continue. Our leader has important words to say. I, all I can just say to the senator from New York is this is not the same. Defending the nation is our first priority. That's what our Declaration of Independence says. That's what our, uh, all of our basis for our roles here. And there are men and women who are in harm's way today, whose lives are in danger, who need this legislation to be better equipped and better able to defend themselves in this nation. I'm asking for a few hours because, as my two colleagues over there will, rec will state, we passed this bill 27 to nothing through the Armed Services Committee. We fight, we argue, we insult, but the fact is we come out with a product that we're proud of and that all of us have supported. So all I'm asking the senator from New York is if we could go off of this for a few hours, because we have basically an agreement on amendments, and get this thing to the president's desk so that he can protect and defend this nation. That's all I'm asking for. Once more to my colleague, and briefly, what? we can, Mr. President,